Well, God, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I worked hard on that introduction. I haven't even started. You know, right, we're doing this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's episode of D&D. My name is Robert, or Bob, if you'd like, and uh, I'll be running our game tonight, uh, a game of Tyranny of Dragons, or at least the first part of it. Um, we, we've been a bit of an established group for a while. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm echoing. Uh, why do I have it open? Uh, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, my name, like I've already said, is Bob. Uh, I, I will be running the game tonight. And uh, why don't I just introduce you to uh, our other players? Uh, you know, let's, uh, I guess I'll start with uh, you, Michael. All right. Just uh, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, uh, um... tell us what you like. Do you like long, long walks on the beach? Like, what do you like? I like pina coladas and getting pounded right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Anyways, I'm back. Uh, Welcome right. back. Uh, um, I'm Michael, also known as Zerif, aka Zerif. Um, I'm the the channel operator, but tonight, like Robert said, he'll be DMing. Uh, I should now I'll put that out later. But uh, I will be playing uh, a new character called Elzira. Well, we'll we'll get to character introductions in the game. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been playing D and D off and on for since I was six, I think. Yeah, six. And, yeah, let's uh, see. And I've also been playing Five uh, E for about five years. So. I love it to death. I can't get enough of it. So, uh, yeah, that's me. So, all right, good introduction. Uh, you better uh, make you better do really good with this, Aaron. All right, that was a really good introduction. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. The pressure's yeah. on. Oh uh, yeah. So, uh, hey everybody, this is uh, this is Aaron, uh, otherwise known as the reluctant DM. But today I don't have to DM. Yay, because Robert is DMing. <laughs> Yay! Um, and uh, I've been playing D&D for I don't want to say how long. I'm going <laughs> to say since high school, and I'm just going to leave it at that. I've been playing 5e since... I think I got the starter set, I think, within a month of it coming out. But it just kind of sat around. I kind of played around with it uh with me and my family for maybe one or two maybe a session but then we i wasn't really too clear on how to play it until i saw the until i saw that video that i think that dnd had put out where they were running the first intro the first session of lost money fan delver and that kind of helped settle things down for me because i was still trying to figure out do you roll initiative with a d10 and stuff like that <laughs> going back to like first edition D, D, which from what i remembered we used initiative we used a d10 for initiative but anyways God. i could be misremembering um but then mm -hmm. the next year um i think right about when tyranny of dragons uh incidentally enough came out that's when I think uh, I really started playing that next that next summer. I think was when uh, was when Pete and I started showing up at our friendly local game store, and uh, and we agreed that I would start running it. And that's also how we met Michael and yeah. Robert. Yeah. Hi. So, Hello. So yeah. So that's uh, that's my intro. How was that? How was that one, Robert? Oh, ten out of ten out of ten. Nice. Give us man a round of applause. Nice. God damn. Nice. The Russian judge get to eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's start with our next buddy. Uh, uh, you know, Pete. How about you go? Get a little introduction hey. from you. I'm I'm our resident uh, Canadian playing D and D. Um, I have I will say it. I have been playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons since '81. Damn. I didn't even know yes. that. I'm pretty damn old. <clears throat> you don't found it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't act either. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember much from back then. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm starting to get Alzheimer's, so that might explain it. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I, I do remember uh, 
um, some 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 fun fun dungeon runs uh, in my childhood that we we did. And some of the, some of the original modules um, that Aaron has um, thankfully uh, drudged back up from my um, my my memory here recently mm -hmm. um, to have us play them again. And uh, I I skipped. Um, I mostly skipped third edition. I played a little bit of third edition, but at Pathfinder, and then I went on to fifth edition. I think yeah, season three or four. I think it was when, when we started playing that. I eventually, I think it was season two. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, it may have been the end of season. We two. were we started at the beginning of the summer of what would have been 2014. Yeah, that's when I started yeah. running Lost Mine of Fandelver. Oh yeah, then it's six years for me. For yeah. Ivy. Because wow, uh, because I started at the beginning of the summer and I finished Fandelver at the end of the summer and that's when we jumped into the. By then I think Tyria Dragons was ending and uh, season two uh, the course. season two uh, yeah the elemental Until whatever yeah. was starting up and that's when we started season one mm -hmm. uh, of the Adventures League stuff. But so. yeah, good one. Yeah, so that's uh, that's our that's our boy Pete, uh, and then uh, Toby. Would you uh would you like to introduce yourself? Hello everyone. I am Toby, Tobias, or Tea Time, depending Tea. on what you want to call me. <laughs> but I think I'm the newbie here, only picking up D and D maybe eight or so years ago. I got the weird orange box like between 4e and 5e starter set. And mm -hmm. I ran that for a few friends, and then Critical Role and High Rollers really cemented my interest in the hobby. And from there, I played a few games with some other people, and then found this bunch of mystics. <laughs> yep. Who... I adore dearly. Sometimes I speak harshly, but it's out of love of wanting better from them. Because they know far more than me. <laughs> my my little heart is warming at that introduction. So good. Clap. He, he, he does keep me in line, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron keeps me in line, so it goes full circle. I'll keep all of you in yeah. line. Don't worry about it. But um, that's been our that's been our kind of normal group, but uh, we actually have a new person joining us uh, for I think it's first time or not first time playing D and D, but first time streaming. Um, we got uh, we got John. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Da, oh. da, 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 da. <laughs> You'll get that joke later. Oh okay. Pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm John, also known as Inspired Gibberish. A few other names in a few other places, but they're not important. The names are the places. <laughs> and I've actually got Toby beat because even though I have experience reading the books from before, I've only been playing D&D &D since the early days of 5th edition. Hmm. Damn. Yeah, so I, bought, not... I actually bought the original Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual for 4E. And I've never gotten to use them except for a couple of one-shots. Dang. $150. <laughs> and I still feel it. Yeah. God dang. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you are. Or our newest player then, or at least newest player in terms of D and D for the division. But yeah, new to the game and new to the group. Uh huh. And uh, hopefully he'll be a long-standing addition to our group for years and decades and centuries to come. I already feel old. Yeah, yeah. I I felt a while. But um, yeah. So as I said before, we're gonna be playing Tyranny of Dragons. Uh, the very first. And arguably, arguably, argue, uh, you know, fucking one of the 
Listen, I have a slight speech impediment. All right, so shut up. All right, but um, arguably one of the oh, oh now I pronounce it correctly. But arguably one of the uh, more interesting campaigns. So there's gonna be a lot of homebrew elements to the campaign and a lot of uh, a lot of changes that I I am doing. And I would just like to shout out r slash Tyranny of Dragons, amazing Reddit and very helpful if you're ever trying to fucking run this. All right, but um, other than that, uh. I mean, I, I think, think uh, there was something I needed to add that um, for the first time ever, uh, we're officially doing a what seems to be a shared universe with previous Forgotten Realms campaigns. Is that right? Um, I a bit, yeah. There's gonna be parts of it from our other campaigns that are gonna be uh, placed into this, but not. So I don't know at least one of the settings yeah, that I've been talking about. It, it'll feel like its own campaign. So if yeah. you're new, it, you won't do not feel as shy to start here. Mm-hmm. Please start here. Yeah. But um, uh, the, they'll may they'll, I would, there I would will say will they're be... more inspired, right? Inspired yeah. by other campaigns. It's not yeah. Really there there'll it. be a few elements from other campaigns added to yeah. this to show the connection between the worlds, but uh, for the most part, it's gonna be its own thing. But, um, yeah. You may see some old familiar characters or something. Who knows? Who who knows what could happen? All right? It's wacky. Uh, But I think that's it. I think we're all good. I think we're ready to uh, start this. Uh, everyone else ready? Yeah, rock yep. and roll. Right. Yep. All right. So as a slight introduction, uh, the town of Greenest. Small, fairly wealthy town in the Greenfields. It's uh, one of the more, it is the wealthiest town amongst the Greenfields. Um, usually, uh, the town folk would be enjoying a quiet day in the close, close-knit community. But the last few days have been eventful, to say the least. Uh, families are gar- and guards alike have been working together, preparing defenses for the upcoming attack. Makeshift barricades are being built on the roads, crates of food are being hauled into the keep, and several homeowners are boarding up their windows throughout the multiple days that this has been occurring. Um, a slight aura of a dread, of uh, an impending doom, uh, fills the town as they work. People seem afraid. They, f- they seem scared. Groups of raiders have uh, been attacking towns all across the greenfields and farther south, and people are worried. But that's besides the point, honestly. I mean, who would you care? Uh, you, you all, for your own personal reasons, have made your way to the sleepy town and now find yourselves resting in your various homes. We zoom in on the Cat and Squirrel Tavern, Tavern and Inn, where a few of our future adventurers are resting. So the Cat and Squirrel Inn is a... Hang on, let me pull up my notes. So many notes. Uh, the Cat and Squirrel Inn is a uh, s- uh, two-story building on the uh, river line of Greenest. Um, the it's a well-kept building. It seems like someone's always on it. All right, no one no one lets it go to uh, destruction. Uh, and the small sign on the outside uh, depicts a s- large squirrel throwing acorns at a fleeing cat. Um, on the second floor of this well-crafted building is a... Let's see, who should we do first? You know, we'll do you. Roll for it. Uh, I, you know, no. I'll... I'll Roll for it. Yeah. No, I, I know who I'm going to choose. Uh, in one of the double bedrooms of the Cat and Squirrel Inn is a strange-looking man. Uh, Toby, uh, would you like to describe your character? Is a satyr man. It's a male form of the satyr. Looks almost similar to a Mr. Tumnus look, but his left eye is. Let me just double check this. Because purple. It's... Mm-hmm. Left eye is a violet purple, his right eye is a bright yellow gold. I misheard for a moment and I thought you said thigh. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah. 
you slowly wake up from the kind of uncomfortable sleep. You know, sleeping in beds can be a bit weird with your your legs, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not difficult. You slowly wake up and find yourself in the room. It's a very fairly basic uh, bedding space. There is a second bed in there, but it's currently empty. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you do? You're up and awake. Got your pack there. Got your supplies. I'll make sure to fully equip myself, but mm -hmm. also make sure to spend a minute or two just performing the rituals of my people and my herd. Mm -hmm. A little um, honoring oh. them before I set out for the day. Right. Performing your small sense, like blowing out a candle, meditating for a few moments. Mm -hmm. As you finish up your rituals, you slowly get up from the room and uh, open up. Uh, there are a couple other rooms there. They appear to be closed. Uh, there may be people sleeping in there. You're not sure, but yeah, yeah there are nah. other humans. Where's yeah. the bacon? <laughs> I uh, heading... <laughs> uh, you actually, uh, since it is morning, you actually uh, smell some, uh, smell this uh, kind of... Uh, Actually, you smell like this uh, roasted pork coming from the uh, coming from the downstairs, and uh, you kind of hear the uh, sound of like boiling boiling water, a little boiling water. Uh, as you head downstairs into the main common room, it's a very comfortable looking uh, looking interior. Nice uh, nice couches uh, around a uh, around a fireplace, uh, boots and tables strewn about. Uh, don't appear to be too many people in here. Uh, one or two quick notes: uh, the the tables and uh, chairs are very well made. They uh, seem to have been uh, lovingly worked by some craftsman, by some in some far off city or something. But the uh, second more important thing is uh, they appear to be all made of metal. Uh, the tables and the chairs are made of metal, uh, with that same fine craftsmanship. Craftsmanship, and. Uh, yeah, uh, you find yourself in the common room uh, behind the counter. Actually, there is a uh, a half elven man uh, currently uh, cooking uh, on a uh, kind of a small stove by a small fire. Uh, oh, who did we lose? Oh, uh, Pete. Ah, welcome back, Pete. But um, currently cooking on a uh, a small fire. Uh, there's a giant pot on top of it, and you hear the boiling water coming from there. And, uh, yeah, uh, the half of a man himself uh, appears to kind of, uh, well, angular features, kind of nice tuft of uh, long brown hair, uh, thin in a lot of places, but kind of a more stocky uh, upper body. And, yeah, he just has a big smile on his face as he's uh, cooking. Um uh, he turns around, he turns as he, uh, hears you walking down the stairs. Oh, uh, hi there. Um, uh, breakfast is being cooked. Uh, do you want anything? Oh, just breakfast when it's ready. Mm. And to what you cook. Uh, you want, uh, say that again? Uh, just to have breakfast when it's ready. Right. And I'll just watch you while you cook. Right. And uh, I he guess... sort of leans wistfully on the bar and takes a stool there, mm -hmm. looking at the guy cooking the food. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I guess that means you want some uh, roasted pork and a beetroot. All right. Uh, I'll get you that uh, for just 11 copper pieces. Uh, hang on. I'll get it uh, for you real quick. And he has just like this kind of cocky smile on his face. And... Um... Yeah, uh, he spends he spends a couple minutes uh, cooking, or spends a good amount of time, 10, 15 minutes cooking the food, uh, before uh, giving to you, giving it to you. But uh, during that time of uh, frivolous cooking, uh, we see we see another figure uh, waking up from the second story, uh, second story building, or this, yeah, the second story building. It's uh, Pete. Would you like uh, to describe? Me? Uh, uh, I am playing Maik, uh, the, um, the Tabaxi Ranger. Um, 
Uh, I don't really have a lot of description for him right now. Um, still kind of getting character. Um, mm -hmm. mostly, um, he's he's uh he's a local of the area. Uh, mm -hmm. part of folk heroes. A lot of people know him. Uh, mm -hmm. by reputation. Um, he had recently fought in a local. Uh, uh, well, he, he had helped some people in a in um, in Baldur's Gate um, from Burden Buildings. So he's he's built up a little bit of reputation from that. Um, mm -hmm. He comes to Greenus quite frequently um, to sell his skins and meats to the locals mm -hmm. from his hunting. Yep. So you slowly wake up from the uh, the bed. Uh, the slightly had uh, like a five out of ten on the bed comfortable comfortability but uh, you find yourself awake in the small kind of basic room uh what do you do i um i uncurl out of the bed mm -hmm. i i stretch a couple times mm -hmm. oh I stretch <laughs> i open up the door go downstairs yeah heading down the stairs once again you see the uh, common room again uh, what's uh, the barkeep's name again? uh or the, the owner yeah uh you would actually know her name or his name uh his name's elite e-l-e-d uh, i will show you a picture i i say elite uh a common breakfast i'm uh oh. You want some breakfast? Yes, yes. Ah, yes. Uh, the usual. Ah, roasted pork and beetroot. Yes. All right, that'll be 11 copper pieces. Uh, I'll ask you for that as soon as it's done cooking. Uh, yep. Take a seat, whatever. Uh, and, as, uh, yeah. I, 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 uh, I jump up onto a bar stool, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. spur, spin around, and put my coppers down the table. And lean back, almost falling off the stool. Then remember to go back on the stool. And lean back forward and look around and say, aren't you interesting, interesting one? Have we met before? Yeah. Uh, uh, Snez. Sneeze. Uh, you, you see the, uh, the strange looking, or you see the tabaxi kind of just like look over to you and with the cocky ass grin, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, bit of a smile on his face. You've never seen it. Yeah, you've actually never seen a tabaxi. So we have met. We haven't met before. <laughs> well, I've seen you across the bar. Right. Yeah. yeah I, was, I was curious if we had, uh, if we, if if any of the members of our group have met before. In not in yet. Um, so I, 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 I recognize him as, um, not a local, right? Oh, a hundred percent. You've never, uh, well, you've seen a couple centaurs in the forest, uh, or not centaurs, um, satyrs, satyrs in the forest, uh, before, but, uh, never seen this one before. So, um, so I go, I go, um. Have, have you got any interesting stories from your land? I always love a great story. Oh, if you want a story, I will give you one. Just let me finish Take my egg. <laughs> yeah, your, your breakfast. Yeah, you, you yeah, were no, your breakfast. I'm, I'm full into my eggs right now. <laughs> <laughs> let me make one up. <laughs> <laughs> He's just holding up a finger with his right hand mm -hmm. as he's shoveling eggs into his mouth with the left hand. It's kind of like <laughs> Elite is kind of like looking at you like, mm. interesting. Uh, I need them 11 copper pieces, by the way. Yeah. I'll find a cross gold piece and just <laughs> take a look at it. Hmm. All right then. Puts it, puts the gold in his pocket, and uh, goes back to cooking. Uh, as as you two have a uh, strange meeting, to, a tabaxi and a and a satyr walk into a room, uh, sorry, walk into a tavern. Uh, but 
as as that's happening, uh, coming in from the outside, actually, coming in from the outside door, is another figure. Uh, Michael, would you uh, like to describe your character? Uh, yeah. Uh, you see this beautiful woman, half elven woman, with fiery red hair, with uh, streaks of blonde, mm -hmm. and uh, two hoopy earrings in her uh, ears, uh, and a beautiful red dress that's extravagant. Not like noble extravagant, but more like entertainer extravagant. She's a mm -hmm. entertainer. She comes in with a uh, fiddle, and she just uh, kicks a door open. She <laughs> goes, "I need an L. That's I made some fine coin this time playing this evening." <laughs> uh, as you kick open the door, Elite is like, "Oi! I know you like being all extravagant and shit, but uh, the door's not made of metal." Kind of like, kind of looks at you a bit annoyed, but it's like, uh, made this early? And she slaps down a gold coin on the... And she goes, meet me. Meet you. Uh, would you like breakfast with your mead? Or would you just like the mead, um, just a giant bottle of mead? Give me a picture in a... Can you give me a picture of mead in a uh, breakfast for a gold coin? Oh, I could give you a lot more than, with, than that with a gold coin. I could buy. A, I could give you my entire store of food. But um, we'll just for now, I'll just a, we'll just start with the tab with the gold coin and just give me a breakfast, a pitcher, and I will be fine. I mean, if you'd like, that one gold coin could get you the uh, Elven Battle Spirit. Uh, not sure if you want that or not, but um, this early, but I won't judge you. She just kind of. Uh, puts her elbows on the counter, uh, folds her hands, puts her chin on top of the hands, and goes, amaze me with this elven spirit. All right, that'll be the entire gold piece, though. So if you don't mind not having breakfast, or if you want to pay more for breakfast. Uh, she hides into it, takes the elven spirit, and begins chugging it down. All right. Uh, as you chug the elven spirit uh, down, uh, you kind of feel this weird... Uh, Ooh, tingly feeling around you. It, it kind of like uh, tingles at the back of your tongue as you uh, take it, as you take down the drink. It's it's kind of um, it's not really a bottle. It's more of like a it's it's in a tankard. It's in a fancy tankard. It has uh, the tankard itself is kind of like this uh, these two kind of uh, ghostly elven uh, male and female kind of just like stretching out of the cup, and. Uh, as you slam it down, you feel all sparkly on the inside. It kind of like washes across your body, like a like a warm breeze on a, a warm summer day. Um, you get five temporary hit points as you chug down the drink. Yeah, and she just uh, puts it down and goes and just uh, takes her carefully, presses her, wipes it off her lips, not to mess up her lipstick. Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes, ah, that's a fine drink. And she just turns to her head to her left and sees mm -hmm. uh, Sness or Sneeze? Yeah. Sness. 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 S-N-E-S. No. Yeah, which, uh, uh, and she just uh, puts her elbows on the counter with her hands, with her chin on top of her hands, and just looks at him and goes, would you fancy a song, a dance, or a fortune? See the the half elven woman, the extravagant half elven woman, look over to you too. I think I'd take a song. Uh, she pulls out her bow and starts playing her fiddle. Uh, make a performance check for me. All right. Or use the if you actually have the proficiency in it, roll the proficiency. Proficiency with. Okay, make a performance check then. 16 is pretty damn. That's pretty good. So you you take out your fiddle or your little bow and fiddle and just uh, start kind of playing this uh, upbeat kind of tune. 
uh, with the morning, uh, the morning rising, uh, and it's pretty fucking good. Like it, it echoes out across the uh, the entirety of the tavern, and uh, lead is kind of like looking, just kind of has, uh, it's kind of ha- resting his uh, elbow and uh, hand on his face, and, or just kind of like listening to it, and kind of like beating along with the music, and you know, pretty good. And at the end of the performance, he gives like a clap, like, "Oh, you always cease to amaze me. Uh, always cease to amaze me, Eliza." Azira. Azira. Sorry. Been a long morning. Ah. Right. Oh, your uh, your breakfast, uh, 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 Marquis. And uh, he uh, takes a quickly grabs a plate and like sets it in front of you, and you see uh. A well-made steak with a, a couple beetroots uh, next to it. Like, uh, 11 copper pieces for that. It's on the table. Ah, right. Takes the 11 copper pieces and uh, places it in his pocket. Well, seems as though uh, you're the only folks currently uh, in this place. <laughs> yeah, you've probably eaten up all your breakfast by this point if you're going that hard. Just stuffed it down your gullet and, you know, it was actually pretty good. Not perfect. By any means, but I mean, it doesn't good. taste as good as food from the Feywild. Oh yeah, I, no. uh, I I daintily cut up my meat and eat little <laughs> pieces. And while I'm doing this, I I sneakily uh, move my beets over to um, Sness's plate. <laughs> eat them readily. <laughs> <laughs> the lead will kind of like chuckle as he goes back to cooking. Uh, and you find you three find yourselves in the uh, bar, and while while that's happening, uh, let's see, uh, Aaron, your character begins walking down the stairs of the Cat and Squirrel Inn. Would you like to describe your character? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Dance is a uh, fire genasi or fire genasi. I don't know. Is it everybody pronounces it different, or am I the only one that pronounces it? Different? No, everyone pronounces it different, and people say it one uh the right way and then the right way is wrong so yeah you pronounce it how you want to all right fire genasi there you uh, go and uh that's how we're ruling it that's how we're ruling it for at least this adventure yep so uh, today. Yep. <laughs> so uh so dance comes down uh he's he's got his uh he's geared up he's kind of nervous and nervous and uh uh about this whole he's he's got a little bit of uh of anxiety you can probably i don't know if you could tell or not since he's fire ganasi uh maybe smoke is coming off of his forehead or something as he comes down the stairs um the um he he just seems really i think kind of his mood probably matches the tone of what's going on in the rest of the town as they've been you know uh, frantically making preparations, uh, right for for the defenses, and uh, you can kind of tell he's got that he's got that the, those nerves running through him as well. That you know he's he's already he's already you know fully dressed, fully geared up with his armor and uh, and and everything, mm-hmm. and um, he's coming down hesitantly. Um, and he he hears the song. And uh, it's it's kind of off-putting for him to hear such a jaunty tale uh, this early in the morning. But then again, he's n- not really familiar with with this this uh, this, this place, these, these, these coastal yeah, this place, which is he considers it coastal, I guess, right? Even though it's probably not. <laughs> oh yeah, it's probably not. It probably won't be considered coastal. But I mean, from where you're from, I mean, yeah. anything. Anything west is coastal. Exactly. So he's, you know, so he's thinking, okay, that's just how they do things here, I guess. And uh, mm. so Dan's comes down, and I guess uh, I'm going to uh, yeah. have a seat next to the uh, next to the fiery redhead because I'm a fiery redhead also. So <laughs> why not? Different type of fiery though. Yeah, and. Uh, just maybe that's just feels more comfortable to me less intimidating the fact that you know (laughs) it's another uh, another redhead in the in the tavern and uh two soulless creatures 
and I'll just go ahead. <laughs> you didn't go there. Oh, you didn't go there. <laughs> and then uh, I'll just uh, I'll just ask. Uh, do I know uh, Elid's name? Or? Um. Yeah. Yeah. You would. Uh, I mean, you bought. You got a room here, so yeah. You know Elid's name, and he's currently cooking at the moment as the three sh strangest figures you've seen in a while are currently uh, staying together. And I'll just go. Uh, I'll I'll have a. I'll have a, your breakfast standard breakfast as well, please. Uh, and he'll kind of like not looking towards you. Just says, uh, you want uh cheaper or more expensive? Uh, let's go cheaper. Uh, and you don't have to fully cook it. It's okay. It, it'll kind of finish cooking the rest of the way in my mouth. <laughs> All right, I'll remember that. Um. I can get you some. I can get you a veggie stew, and uh, some roasted pork, that if you'd like good. that. That sounds perfect. Good. I'll be a uh, ten copper pieces. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Gonna like quickly cook up a cook up a delicious looking meal and uh, place it in front of you. Well, you you four are so far are the strangest folks I've ever seen in this tavern. So um, I. <laughs> This is just a strange sight in general. Well, Sorry for my... I'm, I'm here all the time, man. You, you say that every friggin' time. Listen, all right? I hate it when you remind me of that because it makes me sound like a fucking idiot, all right? <laughs> Listen, you're still, you're still kind of weird. Even if I've seen you a couple times, you're kind of weird. That's just because you don't see many of my kind around here. I mean, parts. There's more of you? Oh, yes, yes. Come from the desert down south. Oh damn! Well, um, <laughs> thank you for the interesting fact. I'll mark that down in my textbook. <laughs> but um, you know how to write, Lee? <laughs> uh, fuck you. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, 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 Lee. Yeah. <laughs> well, you uh, you all enjoy your food. Um. I'm going to keep cooking. Uh, if you need any more food, just holler. Uh, yeah. And he kind of like uh, quickly dips back off and uh, continues cooking. Uh, and uh, since since we only have a few of the party members uh, at the moment, coming down the stairs once again. Man, people are waking up at these strange times. It's almost like there's a weird introduction section. It's wacky. Um... Coming down the stairs is another man. This one, slightly more normal looking. Uh, would you like to describe a character, John? Uh-oh. John? You there, bud? Yep. Sorry, I had myself muted and I forgot. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, you're coming down the stairs right now. This uh, well-made establishment. <laughs> Would you well like to... made. Mm -hmm. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself? I'm a slightly older man with unusual but somewhat fancy, if old, clothing. Mm -hmm. With a pair of drums strapped to my side. Not big ones. <laughs> right. Uh, you... And mm -hmm. the only thing about me that looks well kept is my big curly mustache, <laughs> like Yosemite <laughs> Sam style. <laughs> so yeah, you see this well well groomed mustache adorned on the face of this uh, aging man. You see the you see the mustache flutter in the uh, the no wind of the tavern. And he comes down the stairs. You see the strangest bunch of people you've ever seen. And you worked in a, you know, so. Strange is relative. Strange is very relative. But this is still slightly strange. Um, um, you've worked strip clubs in the Fey world. <laughs> you've done it all. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Way to throw off our DM. Uh, I, yeah, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> That's why 
I'm beautiful. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Elite kind of looks up as you stomp down the stairs, and he's kind of like, uh, you want some breakfast? Ooh, what do you have? Well, uh, are you wanting cheap breakfast or uh, more expensive? Uh, cheap. Oh, cheap. Uh, we can get you some veggie stew and a mead, if you'd like. I'll take the veggie stew and water is fine. Water? All right, that'll bring it down to two copper pieces. It's water. <laughs> and, uh, he, it's actually a lot quicker. Uh, he already, can he you already... go ahead and heat the water for me? Oh, uh, sure. You like warm water? Sometimes. Uh, All I, right. I can heat it for you, friend. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, I guess he's got it. Two copper pieces, and, uh, he hands you a glass of water, or not glass, a mug of water, and uh, a uh, bowl of stew. A bowl of uh, bowl of stew. I mean, looks fine. There's some veggies in it. Looks like uh, looks like some uh, looks like some uh, like carrots and uh, other greens. Yeah, and. Uh, as you hand the water to be heated up by the uh, the fire fire ganasi, uh, slight or how would you describe it, Aaron? Yeah, so I just uh, you know I, I I use produce flame, so I just instantly instantly uh, create a flame in my hand and I just kind of hold it up to the uh to the mug and heat it up that way. I was hoping you would literally thing. pull some fire off of your hair. <laughs> Yeah, I could just balance it on my head, but, no, you know. Yeah. After, like, a minute of the flame kind of burning next to it, I uh, kind of take a good sip and this. Yeah, good thing this place ah. is metal and mm -hmm. not wood. Yeah. yeah. Slightly take, uh, slightly lukewarm water. I take out a little cloth pouch and empty some of the crushed out leaves, crushed up leaves into the hot water. Mm. The, the leaves kind of uh, disperse into the water. I'm assuming yes. it's tea leaves. Yeah, something. Yeah. And it adds a bit more of a taste to it, but um, it's still seasoned water. Spiced water. Don't yeah. tea like that. Say that again? Don't mock tea like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't at me, all right? It's just listen. Tea's just seasoned water, all right. No, well, you want for me? Understand that this is a character that would literally make tea by just putting pine needles in the hot water. True. Which is something you can actually do. <laughs> Apologies, my input <laughs> broke. Out. It's all good. Oh, <laughs> and I'm I'm sorry for offending your uh, your British self. My 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 apologies. It's my natural American tendency to hate tea. I love tea. Well, some of us are real Americans. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, the tavern. Uh, as you all eat and enjoy breakfast, uh, this very strange motley crew with one what would be considered slightly more normal-looking person. Um, <laughs> The, the tavern is empty, for the most part. There are a few uh, people, there's like one or two people that are currently like slumped, kind of sleeping, eyes closed, looking kind of tired. Um, and yeah, uh, it's kind of a calm morning. You hear the slight sound of birds chirping on the outside. And uh, as you all are uh, enjoying a meal, enjoying your morning breakfast, breakfast, um, enjoying your morning breakfast, uh, on a window nearby, there's the sound of like five tapping noises, like like a bunch, like the sound of like a beak being tapped at a window. Uh, mm, bird. Yeah. Do you uh, walk over? I think it's zero walk over. Yeah. Zero, you walk over and see a very a very strange sight. A very strange sight. You see five. Paper mache birds currently pecking their noses across the window or on the window. 
Some of them are kind of like hovering in the air with their wings, but there's just five of them poking on the window. Hey, I think we all just got our Hogwarts acceptance letters. <laughs> Who's tweeting it? <laughs> Who's tweeting? But, um, yeah. Uh, they just appear to be like tapping on the tapping on the window. Somebody, uh, somebody, open that window. Zero open the window and let the birds fly in. Yeah, I, I ex immediately extinguish the flame in my hand. <laughs> uh, one of the birds just immediately flies like in front of you, uh, Elisra. But the others uh, fly to each of you. Uh, one bird for each of you. Uh -oh. And uh, as the birds just, they just kind of appear to be flying, and they kind of try and get close to your hands. I'll hold it out. Yeah. The bird lands in your hands, and as the bird lands, it kind of unfolds and unfurls into a nice piece of paper with uh, what appears to be a scrawling on it. Uh, as you uh, read the paper, the paper itself says, uh, hang on. Oh, another person left. I think it's just feed and trying to get back on again. Right. But um, on the piece of paper, uh, Dan's I fucking hate him. Uh, Dan's. <laughs> uh, it says friends. As you can tell, we are preparing for a siege. The raiders that have been attacking throughout the south are coming. I wish to discuss your cooperation in dealing with situations that have arrived arise arrived throughout the town that need tending to. Please come to Castle Greenus at the top of the hill. Governor Tar Tarbar Nighthill. I kind of look up after reading this, and I say, did everybody get the same note from the governor? The birds are uh, still flying in front of each of you. Uh, she grabs, L Zero grabs a bird, reads the note, mm -hmm. yep. holds it up. The same thing. Put it down in her blouse and goes, what note? <laughs> I pounce on my bird. Make a make an attack roll with your claws. Hey, I need to look. They actually have armor class. Uh, wow. Hang on. You try and pounce and try and grab for it, and uh, you grab it. And as soon as you grab it, it quickly unfolds into a piece of paper. And you oh, kind of roll onto the ground. My dearest just... love. Ooh, ooh, wrong letter. <laughs> Wait, what the hell have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. What? Let's... Yeah, I'm just going to snatch out and grab the bird closest to me. Yeah. There, there's a bird, like, flying in front of you at the moment. And as you reach out, it kind of lands in your hand and... Unfolds into a piece of paper. And, uh, yeah, all of you have gotten the same exact note. Oh, what was that? Was Make the... sure I read it right. <laughs> yeah, com common's still a bit of a fuzzy thing for you. You're still learning it. Though, your, ti your time in, in the material realm has helped out. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. I use mine as a napkin and then tuck it into my pocket. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have a lot of absorbency. It's a piece of paper, but you know, it gets it gets it gets the job done. You get a slight paper cut, but you know, you'll it's fine. My mustache protects me. Oh yeah, your mustache <laughs> uh, bites against the paper. But yeah, you all have received the same note, and uh, mustache. Uh, Azira takes a quick swig of her drink and uh, pockets it and then starts marching up to the uh, castle. All right. I'll go ahead and f hurry up and finish my meal. Yeah. I mean, you, you quickly finish up your meal. It doesn't take, it's not a very extravagant, like, balls to the walls meal. It's a basic, basic breakfast. Uh, I'll grab my gear. I'll grab all my gear and then head out. Mm -hmm. 
He's, you've already finished your breakfast. At this point, you're just like scarfing fake food into your mouth. Fake eggs. It's like that scene from the Robin Williams Peter Pan movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like there's food as long as you imagine it. As long as you just imagine it. But, um, yeah. He's, uh, he's Elise... absentmindedly chewing. At least <laughs> just, uh, enjoying the sight. Like, I've never... Fucking weird day, isn't it? Dons. I rush out the door. <laughs> I dive That's out cool. the window and just shout, Dance! Come on! <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Whoa! Hair flares as I go running off. A lead like as he sees my key run, he's like, "All right," and then you hop out the window. He's like, what the? <laughs> "And you can't hear the other. Uh, you can't hear the end of it as you uh, hop out the window." And uh, yeah, you are now all on the uh, uh, in the town. The town itself is a fairly small town, uh, but the buildings themselves are very well made. Uh, well-constructed buildings. Uh, there's a single river currently running through the center, or the sites uh, on the southern side of town, where you actually uh, currently are. Um, the the road leading up to the castle on the hill isn't a far walk, maybe like a couple minutes to get there. And um, as you as you all begin to walk ahead, uh, you see a lot of people once again uh, preparing defenses on the roads. Uh, trying their best, but um, kind of noticed that uh, you know, maybe they're not they're not that very good at it. A few guards that are helping aren't also doing that well. They seem to be trying their best with what they understand, but um, they seem a bit unprepared for what is supposedly coming. Can but, I be a bodyguard? Oh sure. Uh, you you uh, see one of the guards uh, currently uh, helping out on a barricade. Uh, they appear to be in kind of this uh, chain mail armor, this spear on their back. Kind of uh, the person themselves is a human, uh, shaved brown, uh, shaved brown hair. Uh, looks like he's in his mid twenties. Kind of a uh, slightly uh, slightly uh, tan skin. And he seems to be like very rigorously trying to tie this fucking barricade together. And kind of like looks over as you approach and is like, um, oh, uh, hello? Doing good work. Oh. Let the people know to hang banners of purple and gold. Kind of like looks. See a two other like kind of commoners kind of like looking like, right. We'll make sure to hang banners of gold and purple? Yes. <laughs> right. I will give you a way out of here. Kind of looking at each other like, R right? We'll remember that. Thank you for the kind words. Um. Right. We're just gonna, and kind of like looks over to the barricade like, go back to what um we were doing is that okay yeah i'm oh. not stopping you i'm just saying if you hang up hang up banners of purple and gold i've got a better chance of helping you right we'll uh we'll remember that they kind of I think you probably be able to do uh, As Azira walks by, she's like, I have to do barricade center. Am I going to see you tonight's performance, love? Uh, oh, uh, howdy, uh, Eliza. Um, maybe. Um, Governor Nighthill has been, um, really, uh, pushing for us to get these, uh, barricades done. So, probably not. Too bad. And she just walks away. <laughs> oh, I'll see another performance though. Mm -mm. It's like mm. goes back to tying the barricade. 
<laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you all continue your way up. Sure. Yeah, on the yeah. way there, I'm like brushing myself off and I'm like, do I look nice? I've never met a governor before. And remember, I look like a bum who is dressed in old fancy clothes. <laughs> nice. Except for my mustache. You're fine. That's nice to say. But yeah, you uh you begin heading up uh heading up the hill actually. Uh soon enough you find yourself at the front gates of uh Castle Greenus, this uh this sturdy, well made keep uh with uh, very fine stonework. Um you see see a small gatehouse uh on top of the walls. Uh kind of you can kinda kinda of catch a glimpse of a guard currently uh, kind of like looking out um and you there's a single large uh castle tower um that uh rises kind of like a spire over the uh, entire town uh, within the keep um as you approach the gate uh the guard on the uh in the gatehouse kind of like looks kind of like peeks an eye out and like sees you all it's like Oi, uh, get the gates open. And uh, the the door, the wooden uh, the wooden gate quickly uh, is pushed open by a, a couple guards, as uh, you are allowed inside. And uh, heading heading into the interior, uh, there is a small uh, small courtyard in this place uh, on uh, on the kind of a uh, near the gatehouse is a also a small stables. Um, and in the center of this courtyard is a well that is uh, currently being used. You see guards currently uh, posted about, uh, currently transporting supplies and such. Right. Um, yeah, uh, the few guards that opened up the gate kind of like look at you and it's like, uh, one of them approaches a half-elven man. Hard to tell how old he is. Uh, it's like, uh, you're you you are the uh, folks who Governor Night Hill sent, right? Yep, we got our letters right here. Ah, perfect. Um, I'll we'll lead you inside. Follow us, and uh, himself and uh, another guard uh, lead you over to the tower, uh, the forty foot uh, diameter tower that just rises and rises. Uh, before coming to a top, and you see actually on top of the ca uh, castle a uh, trebuchet, or no, a catapult, a catapult, uh, currently uh, set up on top of there, um, approaching the door. Uh, the guard opens it up, and on the interior of this building, there appears to be a what well, appears to be a waiting room. You see, you see currently a bunch of chairs. Uh, or what would normally be a waiting room, but you currently uh, you see like a lot of comfy chairs, a small little uh, coffee table, uh, a couple books near the door, or like bookcases near the door, and a small desk uh, with currently no one sitting behind it. Uh, but this would normally be in sitting room. However, you see many many guards, or only a few guards actually, currently um, uh, transporting supplies to a trap door and uh, moving them. Down to somewhere. Uh, the guard that is currently leading you says, uh, if you just uh, head up the winding stairs, and he points over to a set of winding stairs, uh, uh, the governor will be there to uh, discuss things with you. Sounds and, good. Uh, mm -hmm. Windy, windy. Windy, windy, walk up. Uh, the guards kind of, after leading you inside, quickly uh, head back out to continue what they were doing. Um, yeah, the interior of this, uh, the interior is stone, uh, floor stone. It's well crafted, made for defense, not nicety at all. But uh, yeah, what do you guys do? So when we get to the top, is there anybody there? Oh, yeah, so you head up the stairs pretty quickly. And uh, coming to the second floor of this uh, castle, uh, 
it's a bit nicer in here. Uh, you see a well-made uh, leather-bound chair behind a well-made desk uh, with a few like uh, books and bookcases behind it. Um, in the center of the room is a table uh, with what appears to be a large map of greenness uh, currently set up on there. And uh, next to a ladder is a large array of weapons and armor and arrows. Just seemingly there for supplies. Um, currently on the second floor, however, you see four figures. Okay. Uh, let's pull up my NPCs. You see four figures. Uh, a dwarven man uh, in this kind of heavy set plate armor, uh, a large round shield on its back in this kind of... Uh, the armor itself ha is kind of silver slash steel color with, uh, with a bit of like this dark green. And uh, either side is a battle axe, uh, currently uh, not being used. He himself is uh, kind of has this uh, light brown hair with this uh, two-pronged beard that uh, goes down to around uh, nipple area. Uh, next to him are two figures. Uh, one appears to be female, another appears to be male. They appear to be in kind of uh, these slight vestments. Kind of a mismatch of green and white. Uh, they uh, currently kind of are quietly talking to each other, um, looking a bit nervous at the general surrounding of this place. And another figure. Uh, two of you would recognize him uh, more so than the other individuals. Um, Eliza or Eliza and uh, Mike. Uh, you see a tall tall kind of elderly man uh and probably is like 50s or 60s um with kind of slightly balding hair and uh, a long back of brown hair like uh, that goes down to shoulders um and this kind of goatee that reaches down there he himself wears uh this, these fine blue noble attire and uh, he himself has a long sword at his side and kind of in the noble armor is arm or in the noble attire is armor Kind of set in. Uh, you would know him as Governor uh, Governor Nighthill. And I'll show a picture of him right now. Um, but uh, as you come up the stairs, he like looks up. He's like, "Well, um, hello. <laughs> it's uh, good to meet you in person." Uh, and he'll kind of look over and walk over, and it's like, "It's um nice to meet you. I am uh, Governor Tabar Nighthill." Or um, Governor Night Hill for short, sure, for short. Or if you'd like, the locals call me Governor. How's your uh, 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 gets her to me years list up for skirt? Does it curtsy, Governor? Ah, uh, Lesra, it's good to see you again. Kind of gives like a slight Governor. bow of the head. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, Mike. Uh, I know we don't talk often, but um, it's good to thank you for hunting for us. The food has been most useful. You're welcome, sir. And um, who might you three be? Uh, and he kind of looks over to the centaur first. Or satyr. Or satyr. I'm going to get that mixed up for the first couple sessions, so bear with me. I'm prepping a shocking grasp in my hand as I hold position. I'm just like... Friend yours? And I look to the others. Oh, sorry. I thought I um introduced myself. My mistake. I'm Governor Tarbar Nighthill. Uh, I am the governor of Greenness. I run this place, as some would say. So you won. You're the one that asked for us to come here. Yes, I did. Um. And who might you be? I saw some of my guards reported you entering the town, and, well, I'd like to know who you are. You can call me Sness. Sness. It's nice to meet you, Sness. And, uh, you? And he looks over at you, uh, Aaron. Oh, I'm, uh, Dan's Fever from the, uh, from Orlbar. Oh. You may have heard of my family. 
Um, we don't get much information around here, but it rings a bell. It's good to meet. Uh, it's good to meet a uh, fellow noble. Likewise. <laughs> and uh, you, sir? Kind of like looks at you for a second. Bailey Barnum, sir. It's a pleasure, quite a pleasure. And I shake his hand with both of mine way too vigorously. You you grab his hand and he, Will, uh, you're a lively one. Um, <laughs> kind of like shakes your hand back with a firm grip. Uh, old in form, but young at heart. <laughs> well, um, it's good to meet you. Um, once again, another interesting figure entering my town. Um, oh, uh, let me introduce uh, the other people here. Uh, this is uh, Kathleen... Uh, Castellan Escobar the Red. Um, we just call him Escobar. Uh, he's the, what you'd say, commander of the castle. And uh, I'll show you his picture now. It's an NPCs. Um, the dwarf with kind of a like haughty face, kind of like snorts a bit. It's like, all right, nice to meet you. And... Uh, goes back and kind of begins to pour over the the map. Uh, at the moment, it's clear skies. Uh, a bit, well, mostly clear skies. It's a bit cloudy out. Uh, sun is shining in the bright, er, sunning, sun is shining in the bright sky. Oh, so it's not super cloudy. Yeah, it's not super cloudy. There are a few clouds in the sky, but it's just regular weather for, uh, for Greenfields. Question. Mm -hmm. Would I recognize the name Bailey Barnum. Um, you, I mean, it's a, it's an old memory, but it rings a bell. It's been a minute, though. You she you can't. Puts her finger on her chin and begins thinking. And uh, she puts it out of her mind quickly, but doesn't. But to think about later. Right. And um. <clears throat> These are uh, two acolytes of the uh, Shantra temple here. Um, uh, uh, Dwali and Bream. And they kind of like, they seem, they were talking, but as soon as their names are mentioned, they kind of like, oh, well, ha. Huh, and they kind of like look over to you and, oh, and they give like a bow. And I'll also show up their pictures. Hang on. Just got to get the other one. Um, thank you for coming here today. Uh, I know, um, I don't know if you have busy schedules, but, um, I'm still happy that you came. Uh, please take a seat. Any motions to the uh, table with the map? Um, and you see five stools prepared, along with uh, four others, so nine stools total around this uh, table. All right, I, uh, I sit near Dwali. Say that again? I sit near Dwali. <laughs> right. Dwali, uh, Dwali and uh, Brem are currently sitting together. They just kind of like, they seem a bit nervous. Uh, uh, I've probably met her before, right? Um, you may have met her once or twice, but it's more, it was more like a passing thing. Okay. Less, less, um. Uh, Elzir is going to sit near Brem. Mm -hmm. Brem. The, the two of them look a bit more nervous as they see the two of you sit down. Less nervous around <laughs> you, Eliza, but still. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go try to sit near the governor. Yeah, governor will take a seat. Uh, Escobar sits in the next spot next to the uh, the governor. Uh, kind of like eyeing you, uh, eyeing you a bit, uh, Duns. Um, yeah. Uh, would you two like a seat? I mean, <clears throat> would you two like a seat? Says Escobar. Les takes a seat opposite, pulls out a dice, and just tips it on the table. Right. <clears throat> well, I guess you'll be standing. Or if I, you like, you can take a seat. I sit down wherever's left. All right. Uh, Tavar kind of like look, or the governor looks a bit slightly embarrassed, but kind of regains his composure and says, "Well, um, 
Well, um, I'm glad uh, you can make it. No, no, I'm... Oh, fuck, my accents are getting all messed up. I'm glad you can make it. Um, like I said in my letter, there have been... a lot of... Uh, interesting situations that have arised throughout uh, these, the preparations for the defense against the Raiders. And, um... Oh, you may not know, so I'll... I will just give a reminder. Um... Recently, there have been uh, raids on some of these smaller towns uh, in and surrounding the green fields. Um, at the moment, we don't know why they are raiding. We don't know who they are. The few accounts we have gotten have been troubled mess messes of fear and frightening. Um, and... At the moment, we believe that uh, they will be arriving in three days. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, arriving in three days. Um, so we've been setting up as best as we can, uh, but it's been a bit of a problem. Uh, the a few things have currently been causing problems. Um, specifically, and he kind of uh, looks. Looked at the map. Um, crop yields have been lower than usual. Um, there have been rumors that the... Uh, we have a small community of fairy dragons uh, resting in the nearby forest. They help with increasing food production. But recently they've been... Um, I don't know. They... All we know is that the food production has been dropping. And... That's what again. brought me to town. <laughs> I, I came to report that my, uh, that the, uh, the hunt, the hunting in the forest has, has drastically decreased recently. Really? Um, do you know yes. what's been, is that with the fairy dragons, do you think? Uh, I don't know, but a lot of my traps are, are either destroyed or, um, or just empty. Mm. I, I think a lot of these animals may have may have been scared out of the forest, or uh, may actually have uh, been uh, been attacked. Mm. Not quite sure. Strange, but um, we need them back. Um, at the moment, we have an okay amount of food stores, uh, food stored up, but um. I'd rather not have our food fail when we most need it. Um, the the harvest is the most important thing here. And if we run out of food, then that's just disaster. If we can't keep food for after the attack and during the attack. <clears throat> so what do you have in mind? Uh, well, any kind of points to the forest. Uh, go investigate it if you have the time. Or if you can, if you can find out what's wrong, that'd be nice. Um, and uh, and um, there there've been more uh, more interesting um, happenstance happening throughout the town. Um, Escobar, you've been the one dealing with the um, uh, thief problem, and Escobar kind of looks up and nods like, right. Um, and he takes out a piece of paper and places it on the table. And you see uh, what appears to be a wanted poster. You see uh, two two kind of uh, very hairy-looking uh, drawings, uh, like uh, drawn figures of these very hairy creatures with these kind of like snout faces and uh, kind of like pointed like tusk. And uh, these are it's pretty easy to recognize these, maybe except for you. Um, uh, SNES, uh, they appear to be bugbears. Um, they've been uh, they've been uh, whaling all traffic uh, from the south and uh, hoarding weapons and supplies that they've been uh, gathering from their raids. And um, those weapons and supplies may be a good uh, use to our soldiers who have been, um, I won't say sh shortly supplied, but. Um, the additional supplies will would definitely be needed for us. 
maybe we can outkit some of our more uh, stronger uh, commoners with uh, weapons and armor to prepare for the defense. And uh, there's uh, there's um one more thing that's was brought to my attention recently, which I wish would have been brought to my attention earlier. Uh, kind of turns and looks at the two uh, two acolytes, uh, Brem and Dwali. And um, they kind of like whisper each other, looking a bit nervous. And um, um, Dwali speaks up and is like, well, um, we have a small crypt in our temple. And um, there's been a problem that's been there for a few a few months. Um, a group of zombies have um, arised from a broken hole in the floor, and they've been preventing us from gathering our supplies and uh, resources from in the crypt and the small library we have down there. With the along with that food and such. Um, we don't know why they came out of the ground, and we've been wanting to keep it secret as to not cause problems. But um, I think at this point it's become uh, apparent that we need as much resources as possible. Um, so helping deal with that would greatly help us. And uh, Governor Nighthill kind of nods and is like, and sighs slightly annoyed. But, <clears throat> well, um, those are the things currently uh, slowing down or would be additional assistance or would provide additional assistance to the defense of the town. Um, I was hoping that you all would assist. Um, obviously, you'd be paid for assistance um, by equipment and such. Uh, I can provide almost anything that you need uh, equipment-wise to deal with this, but um, it'd be nice if these could be dealt with quickly and swiftly so that um, we can have the defense of our town ready for the raiders and hopefully repel them, but I'm not so sure about that. Well, Governor, you've explained uh, three serious problems. Um, yeah. Be being the leader here, the lord of these areas, what would you consider the highest priority? Thanks for a moment, kind of stroking his uh, beard. The, the crypt can be dealt with near the end, or later. Not at the end, later. But um, between the two, between the two, the bugbears have weapons and armor that we could be use that could be used to outfit our soldiers and outfit some of our commoners for additional militia. But um, the food is the most important thing. We need our food, otherwise we won't survive after the siege or even possibly won't have enough food for before it. So finding out what's going on with that would be nice. And hopefully fixing it would be a great thing. But other than that, all of them are important. All of them need to be done. Um, do you have any other questions for me? I mean, I can answer... Hmm, I don't know how much I can answer, but... I can. I'll answer to the best of my ability. Who's coordinating the the defenses? Uh, we we noticed uh, some concerning things uh, with some of the uh, preparations that were being made as we made our way up here. Currently, uh, Escobar is leading in it, but um, to be entirely honest, these people haven't seen much um, fight. We have the occasional bandits. But our regular militia is enough to deal with it. Um, however, this is this raiding group, at least from rumors and information, um, it has been 
it's much larger than our force can deal with. So getting the people out of their houses to prepare for a fight, they're not used to it. And they don't have any practice with it. So it's taking time to get them properly working on it. And it's it's not going well, to say the least. Hold the wolves till you can't. When you can't fall back, hold the streets. We, the plan is, we we know we can't repel it. Even though we want to repel it, we can't. Uh, forces are numbering in hundreds, more than that probably. Um, yeah. So. Our goal is to stall them for as long as possible so we can get as many people into the keep. It's a bit strange. It's been a bit strange, but um, the information we've gathered, they they aren't approaching with any siege equipment or anything. So we're assuming that they aren't going to try and siege the castle, which uh, is weird. But I will not take a boon. I will not uh, deny a boon. Um... Have you considered Question. setting up traps? That could be a possibility. But um, none of us are trap makers, or mm -hmm. really had to do it. And Escobar's like, I'm I'm, I'm not sure uh, we have the time for the people, like, like, like the Honorable Governor said, um, we're too focused on trying to build up barricades and such to slow down attackers to focus on more out of the box thinking um, tactics, um, and we don't have the, most of us don't have the skill to do that. Um, so, okay, well, at the moment we're just focusing on defenses. Yeah, so make sure that you redouble those efforts while we deal with these other issues. I guess our first For stop will be the forest. Hmm. Right. Uh, I'll make sure to focus on that. Um, like I already was, but, um, thank you for going to deal with this. Uh, is there any equipment that you need specifically? Uh, armor, weapons, the whole shebang, additional arrows for you, Mark, Mike? Uh, I always use more arrows. Uh, that's not been good. I haven't made a lot of money this, uh, this season. Uh, due to lack of uh, lack of goods to sell, so yes, I'm a little low on uh, funds. Mm. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can get you uh, two additional quivers of uh, arrows uh, uh, to help you in uh, whatever the hell this is. And uh, he yeah. actually walks out. Yeah, he walks over and grabs uh, two quivers and uh, sets them sets them in front of you. I'll take a quiver of bolts. Quiver of bolts. Grab uh, grabs a single quiver of bolts and uh, sets it over to you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, and the governor kind of nods, like anything to do with this. We need to be ready for this. Um, once again, thank you for helping. I um, not many people have answered my call, and you're the you that have come here in good faith. So it's nice to see that. But, um, we wouldn't happen to have any plate armor sitting around, would you? Um, <laughs> it looks it's like I think we have a couple sets. Um, uh, and oh, he looks over yeah. to, uh, Escobar and kind of. Escort kind of looks back at him and kind of looks like Claire and kind of sadly, or sadly nods like, yes, we have a few, uh, we have a few pieces of plate mail. If you'd like, uh, if you'd like some plate mail. A glove. Yep, that <laughs> sounds good. Right. Um, and he heads over to currently a covered piece of, ar like a covered, like, stand of armor. Uh, pulls off a small blanket and uh, you see finely crafted plate armor. Uh, you see, actually, uh, along with that, a small crest uh, on it. Um, the the crest appears to be a large open field 
uh, with a rising sun behind a green tower at the moment. And it appears to be a full set of plate armor. Cool. Nice. I'll go ahead and equip that then. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you take off your current armor. It takes you around like 15 minutes or something to re-equip. And as that's happening, he's like, um, well, um, do you need uh, any other uh, equipment or anything? Uh, Azura looks at Brim and just uh, puts her arm hooked under his arm and just goes, is there any more information you could tell us about the situation in the temple and the zombies? Uh, he kind of like, kind of like shakes a bit, like, oh, oh, she, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, um, well, um, and uh, he kind of like clears it. So I was like, <clears throat> uh, they've been there for a few months. Um, they just appeared one day from a hole that had broken through. Um, and they, uh, strangely enough, they haven't been attacking any of us. We tried to get down before, but, uh, they just, they just kind of uh, been keeping us from getting down there. So we don't know. We don't know much other than that. We haven't gotten anyone down into the hole because that's where they came from. Um, yeah, that's as much as uh, I can say. Uh, though he kind of like looks and kind of whispers, like, I'd, "I'd like you to keep it a secret," kind of. Um, um uh i uh we haven't told uh anyone else about this and like i said the uh the the leader of our church would like to keep it a secret she just uh uh presses her uh finger against her lips and just winks and goes our secret Right. <laughs> kind of looks away nervously. And kind of unhooks his arm. <sighs> right. Um, <laughs> Demar kind of is just kind of like sitting there and he's like, um, well, um, anything else you'd like to know? Or anything that I can provide you? Zero. It's like curtsy while she's sitting and go, do you know where we should start in the wood? Clues, location. Um, hmm. Begins thinking. Ah, uh, well, hmm. There's a small path that, there's a small path that leads into the woods. Um, that may be the best place if there, if people are messing with things there, but honestly, we don't have much. They, we actually have a small meeting spot, uh, for the fairy dragons there. Uh, we, quick, quick information dump, or quick information, but, um, we have a few local fae or fairy dragons that we've always been friendly with. Uh, we don't interact much with them, but uh, around once a month we bake uh, small cakes and leave them in the woods. And in return, they make the town's crops and flowers grow well throughout the year. Um, but um, that may be a good spot. Uh, and he kind of points it out on the map. Uh, it's not too far west of town. It's near the edges of the forest. Could you provide us some cakes to take with us, so that way they know that we're um, <laughs> going in peace? Kinda, Good idea. He kind of chuckles and is like, um, we don't have any cakes ready. It's not set until a couple more weeks, but um, we could uh, we could get someone to bake a cake. It would take a take an hour or two. Yeah, let's let's do that then. We don't want to make we want to make sure that we have a good impression on them. Right. Yes, that is a good idea. <laughs> um, I guess during that time, do you want to deal with the the thieves, or do you want to wait till the cake's done? Well, we're still in hand to hand with a bunch of people that want to kill us. <laughs> say, say that again. 
People still want to kill us. <laughs> um, why would people want to kill you? <laughs> oh. Oh, sweet self child. We killed their friends. People are going to come for us, and they're going to keep coming. Um, you killed their friends. When? When, when did you right kill? Now. Oh, oh, you're talking about killing the the bandits. Um, I mean. Uh, Escobar, and he kind of like looks over to him in the dwarf, has a cocked eyebrow and, and slight confusion. Like, um, well, well, uh, we don't know if they have any friends. From what we know, they're by themselves. Oh come on! How many people do you think follow people like us? Uh, I'm I'm not sure what you mean by that. You're. What do you mean? Human. Yes. Um. <laughs> anyway, Escobar we're, just we're, like we're gonna be like, don't worry, we'll figure out what's got his goat, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah, um. Good, good so face right now. Well, right. Goat. <laughs> um. Uh, Escobar kind of like looks and is like, uh, if you uh, deal with these uh, deal with these uh, banditry, then uh, there's a hundred gold bounty on their heads, uh, each of them. So we'll uh, yeah, we'll get you that payment uh, as soon as their uh, their heads are brought to us. That that'll help make up for my short shortfall of earnings from uh, selling uh, foodstuffs and skins this season. <laughs> Yes, well, hopefully it will help out. But, um, if you're trying to head there, um, we believe they've set up at a, uh, on a small abandoned barn south of town. Um, so if you want to go deal with that, then they should be south. It's a pretty easy place to find, but we haven't been able to send guards down there because we're preparing defenses. So, that's an option for you. Then, yeah, so, do you want to wait till the cake's done? Let's go take care of those bandits, then. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm itching to let some energy out. <laughs> and you Escobar. can see uh, Snez's left eye, his mm -hmm. yellow one. Mm -hmm. Is like crackling with lightning energy. Yeah, he he has he, he's he's not good until he's got a, at least one good uh, throw down in by by lunchtime. So we better get him going. Uh, I'm just building up too much electric energy. Uh, the... Have him pull you overcharge a battery. <laughs> Escobar kind of like has a his his kind of confused gaze turns into a smile. He's like. Ah, I love a good uh, fight in the morning. <laughs> well, uh, if you'll be off then, I wish you luck in dealing with those bastards. Uh, we'll see if we can get some people, some of the common folk uh, down there to uh, gather up the supplies after you're done. And El Zira uh, uh, gets a wing set. Uh, Brim? Brim, yes. I didn't watch. Uh, Cast uh, Dwala, Dwali? Dwali. 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 Walks past Dwali and gives her a slight smirk and then uh, walks down with her others down the. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you've, you, uh, as, as you've been putting on your armor, uh, you finish putting it up. And it's pretty nice. It's not well fitted. It's not fitted, but it's good enough. All right. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, 
you all head head down the stairs and outside out of the castle. Uh, Night Hill kind of uh, bids you a quick farewell wa waving to you as you leave. And yeah, so you guys are heading uh, south towards uh, towards the direction that uh, Castle and, or Escobar told you to head. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 I lean over okay. towards uh, uh, Mike. How do you say your name, Mike? Mike. 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 And uh, I was like, you know how to track the these bandits, right? Mm, I haven't tracked bandits before, but maybe, could probably. But don't we know where they are? You, well, yeah, we know they're south. Well, I thought we knew where their base was. Weren't we told which house they were in? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a, it's a barn, uh, a few hours south. Yeah. Yeah. Like. I could track them, but we already know the location, right? Right. Unless so we're we'll, worried that they might have like snuck off or trying to jump just, us. Just, just to make sure, yeah, we don't get ambushed along the way. Right. Sure. Um. Uh, okay. It's an out loud conversation. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, it kind of, just kind of is, in. but I'm trying to be subtle, but I'm too loud. Yeah, I'm just gonna pipe in. Well. If the stragglers follow us, trying to ambush us, why don't we just take them down before we get there? Sounds like, like a good plan. The... Man, y'all, how y'all y'all have been doing this adventuring stuff for quite a while, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've really got a lot to learn. I'm glad I'm with y'all. <laughs> you just hear a very loud sigh from Snez. He's just like, I don't know uh, how they think. And he just, uh, Azira just says, actually, it's my first time. This should be fun. And just uh, kind of walks forward. Yeah, I'm not a venture. I'm just a, tr I'm just a hunter. <laughs> but you don't go looking for adventure, son. Adventure finds you. I'll, I'll keep that in mind, good sir. But uh, yeah, you guys uh, begin heading uh, south down the uh, down a road. It's a uh, kind of windy. It's a bit old, but you know, uh, you know, it's good enough for what it is. Uh, it it's a good hour or so walk. Uh, it's a good hour or so walk as you uh head as you head down the road. Uh, hang on, let me pull up my uh, shit. Um, as you are uh, who? Okay, what's the uh, what's the marching order? Well, I'm assuming I'm going up first. Yeah. So you Is and it two by or one by? It can be whatever. Well, well, if yeah, we're two by, then I'll then I'll 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 take the lead with him. Okay. I'll be hanging back in between the pair of them. Uh, L Zero will be behind him, watching them from behind. I'd probably be somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, as Mike and um Mike and uh uh Don's uh as you begin to uh head down the road. Uh, you both kind of feel a weird, like, you take, you both take a step forward, you both feel like a weird kind of shift in the ground, and then it falls out from under you. Oh, uh, as you both fall, uh, ten feet down into a pit. So, you both take one point of bludgeoning damage as you land onto the ground. Uh, and, uh, as you are falling, the quick fall it is, uh, <laughs> you hear the sound of a, you sound, hear the sounds of hissing. And, uh, you see in the pit, five poisonous snakes currently, uh, kind of slithering about and, uh, become quickly agitated. As uh, as you two enter the pit, um, I'm going to have you guys roll initiative. 
But these snakes do get a surprise round off. So we need a we need to see our tokens. The, oh, the black do you not see our tokens? Oh, you guys can't see anything. Oh, nope. did I accidentally turn on uh, dynamic? Yeah, I, I was wondering about that. Can you guys not see the? Can you guys not see the landing page anymore? No, it it's just black. all turned black. It's oh whoa oh why you why is it hold on hold on don't stop 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 what you're doing? No, I'm just saying that's my token on the sheet. And that's the no, I, I know, but don't, yeah, no, don't, don't do anything. Um, hang on. Okay, I don't know why it switched. Hang on, I'm gonna do something real quick. Boop. I can see Boop. it's just fine. Okay, are you guys on the the uh main screen again? Yeah. 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 Okay. Put yourself in marching order. From there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know why. That's. That's honestly very weird. I do not know why it switched from the landing page to that map. But, um, yeah. Uh, the snakes get their surprise round off. As soon as I set them down. There appear to be uh, four poisonous... Actually, how many are there? Let me take a look. So there my nature be... explorer does not help me with this crap? Uh, no. Sadly, no. It, uh, it looking at it now, it appears that the trap uh, was very well concealed, extremely well concealed, um, and it's like it was a weird, it was a very, it was a barely noticeable, well concealed, uh, like discoloration with the road. But uh, yeah, snakes are going to roll up. Uh, I get to roll on these two with advantage. Advantage. I don't know how I do that. So there's uh, just roll it again, and then you can change it in the turn order thing. Okay, so I'm next to him. So should I move my token? Either yeah, to move your token to next right? to him. Uh, whichever one you honestly prefer. All right. Yeah. So, uh, hang on. I gotta oh, find. Oh, you're doing north to south. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. At first, I was yeah. doing west to east, but I guess we're doing south to north. Yes, yeah, this is in the middle. 20 plus 3. Oh, thanks, Gower. Good roll. Where's Bailey at? Is he behind me? Uh, I'd... With how we were walking, I'd probably be about right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the snakes get their surprise round off. Uh, only two of them are able to attack, though, since there's not enough room in the place for others to get in bites. So they're both going to try and bite each of you once. So, first one, 12 on my eek. Misses. All right. And then a 16 on Don's. Will miss. All right, so the two snakes slither up and they hiss at you and try and bite you with their venom, uh, poisonous fangs, but Nom. you're able to dodge out of the way quickly before they uh, get in a good bite. Um, now we're on actual initiative. My eek. Um, so they're right up on front of me, um, how deep is this pit? It's uh, 10 foot deep, but uh, as you look at the actual pit, uh, it appears to be like, uh, like stretching out at the bottom where it makes it more difficult to climb out of the pit. Mm -hmm. Try. Oh, there we go. We're not insanely difficult, but more difficult than it would be just to regularly well, climb I, out of it. I do have a 20 foot climbing speed as a cat. Well, then it doesn't matter because you have a climb speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, so uh, I really leave your buddy behind. Real quick, uh, SNES needs to. Well, you need to resort because SNES oh, has initiative. Yeah, I, I could do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I yeah. thought I clicked token, but I didn't. It's all good. So, uh,. So you do you climb out of the pit? Um, I will. He might as well. He's a ranger. He wants to do ranged attacks. Not yeah, it, <laughs> not it, be in their face. I, I, am, I am not. I am not good close range combat. My oh wait, I messed up. There should only be two snakes. My mistake. Boop. 
Um, I will take the dodge action and I will climb up. Okay. So their attacks have disadvantage on you? Yes, they can do tax, uh, tax on me, but they have disadvantage. Yeah. So, so they're going to try and. Let me just ask yes. why, why would you why would you dodge instead of just disengage? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, would you like to disengage? Good. This is the first ever 5e adventure. So we're acting like we're new to 5e. Yes. Yeah, that that's how this works. I just, I just wasn't thinking about it. You're right, though. <laughs> we took you have like 45 plus years experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's not always the best option. because It's not, yeah. Having them use their, that's why it was a question. Their, um, use their ability could, could be a disadvantage for them, right? So, yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I think in this situation, it's probably better for dis disengage. Yeah, so they only engage. So you disengage and quickly climb up the pit. Use your uh, cat-like claws to get up. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's snakes. there's snakes in that pit. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey. Oh. You go, man. Uh, are there? Well, there's enough of this here. I don't have to worry about it much. I'm going to take my rope and throw it down to dance and pass the other end to Snez so we can hold on to it for him. Okay. Well, the rope kind of dangles there as it's thrown into the pit. Uh, Don's, uh, the snakes will attempt, or, well, I, that's an action. That's an action to do that to you and Snez to get the rope into the pit and hold on to it. I mean, I don't know if he's going to help yet. I just passed one end of it to him. Okay. Uh, but no, I can I can help more not... Uh, wait. But uh, the snakes are going to go. I'm still going to say it takes your action to do that, to check the rope yeah, into the it pit. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the two poisonous snakes are going to attempt to bite you again, Dan's. <laughs> 16 is a miss, if I remember correctly. It's a yeah. miss. <laughs> that's Ooh, definitely a hit. That's going to hurt. That's a hit. Okay. That's going to hurt. And he goes down. First player kill. <laughs> so, total of oof, 11 points of piercing damage. Yikes. Ouch. As the snake bites into your side and kind of it's a good bite, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, wait, no. Oh, actually, don't mark down the nine damage. So, mark that back up. Okay, back up to what? Uh, mark mark it up by, uh, add nine to it. And nine health back. But, um, make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. So, you actually take half of it, so you only take four poison damage instead of, uh, Instead of the uh, nine, so you take a total of six damage. Okay. So right. the, s the snake gets a good bite into your leg and tries to release the poison into you, but your fire giant or fire ganasi blood uh, prevents the uh, the poisoning attack from taking full effect, which would have been immensely brutal. <laughs> yes. Yes. But uh, that's all the snakes can do. Snez. Level one Enter. problem. Mm -hmm. Level, Level one. one. <laughs> Question. Mm -hmm. Is Dance in the pit with two snakes? Yes. 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 I just told you that. <laughs> As I claimed it as a pit. So I'm like, there's snakes in that pit. <laughs> this, here's the pit. Yeah, no, I'm just double checking before I do what I want to do. Just making sure he's actually in the pit with snakes. You know what you should do? You should fireball the pit. Oh, fireball at this level? I could. I'm level one. <laughs> What's level one? <laughs> Anywho, uh, Snares is going to look at the situation, look at Bailey, and just go, Really? A fucking rope? And I'm going to start spinning up a chromatic orb. 
and I'm going to fire a lightning chromatic orb at this guy. Okay, going big. Make an attack roll. 16 hits. That's an expensive spell. Yeah. Yeah, but then... The 13... Ooh. I'm going to use Dichromancy. I'm going to pull most of the color yellow out of my tunic and deal an extra four damage to the snake next to it. Both the snakes ex explode into this lightning burst of energy. Did and you just, Did you just see uh, the fire ganasi covered with dead snake all over him? Yeah. <laughs> you feel a bit of the lightning pulse off the snake, but the lightning, uh, the lightning just disperses the snakes and kills them. My, Maik's glad he's not down that pit now. It's a mess down there. Right. I call down to dance. Hey, grab that. We don't want to waste it. And now I'll grab the rope and help. Um, Dan, as a quick note, um, as you're down there, covered in snake shit mm -hmm. and blood, mm -hmm. everything, um, you see on the ground there's a strange rune currently carved into the ground. Uh, let me uh, let me analyze it. Uh, go ahead and make me arcana can check, Dan. Arc arcana. Uh, yes. Um, it's a weird rune. It doesn't do anything. The rune activates when uh, sunlight uh, is sh shined upon it, but you don't know what it does besides that. Um, <laughs> it's some weird magic. <laughs> This is this is out of character, but yeah, a rune that activates with sunlight. Yeah, <laughs> two weeks in a row, right, y'all? <laughs> yeah, key in the bottom of a pit that you can't get out. Well, I'm at the bottom of a pit, and I can't make out too well, right? Because it's kind of dark down here. Well, there's sunlight now shining down from the sky. Is there now? Yeah, because the pit pit trap hole. Okay, so just mm -hmm. to be sure, I will. Uh, I was going to say I can illuminate with uh, the flame in my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just carved into the base of the pit itself? Uh, yeah, it's kind of carved. It's There's a bit of stone. It, the floor is kind of stone. That's why the fall is pretty hard. But um, yeah, it, uh, it appears to just kind of be carved into it. Um... There's not really any other indication. From the the rune. So so let me just clarify. So the rune indicates that it would could be activated using sunlight. Yes, which there's already sunlight in the pit. So if it was activated, if if it's activated, or if it could be activated, it's been activated. It's probably like an alarm or something. Okay. All right. But, um, let me go ahead and uh, climb out then. Okay. Take a, take, take a oh. advantage athletics check. No need to make the athletics check. Okay. It's pretty easy anyway. I mean, it's this is it's a ten. It's it's just because the hole is a bit wider at the bottom that it's more difficult to climb without the rope. I see. But otherwise, yeah, it, it's fucking easy. You don't need to worry about it. Okay. You pop out. Pop out, and I'm like, there were snakes down there. Snake is the worst. I think there's snake on you. Uh, yeah, and I hand it to Bailey. Jerky, <laughs> knock yourself out. Free jerky. I stuff it in the same pocket as the note. <laughs> pocket jerky. Um, hang on one sec. Next oh no, Elzira fell in the pit. <laughs> Oh no! But um, yeah, you get out of the pit. It's once again pretty easy, and the road is still ahead of you. Doesn't seem to be uh too much of a problem to get out. Um, but yeah, 
you begin uh, heading out. And I must. Do you guys keep following the road? Yeah. Okay. Heading down the road, it's not too much longer uh, until you finally get to what appears to be the location. Um, hang on, I need to edit the map real quick. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay. Um, as you head down the road, uh, you see approaching the uh, a old dilapidated barn house. Uh, it appears to be in disuse at the moment, and um, currently uh, not really in a good state. Uh, you do kind of notice some movement from the inside, and popping out from cover, you see a bugbear holding a javelin, throwing it at you. <laughs> so the bugbear is going to chuck a javelin at, you know, we'll roll. Actually, wait, what's the range of javelins? 3120? Uh, like 20, 40? No, no, it's, it's, it's longer than uh, that. 40, 60. Yeah, Close enough for all of you. Close I know enough. the long range is over a hundred feet, and the short range is usually half that. But um, he's going to chuck a javelin at thirty-one twenty. Thirty-one twenty. Duns, you're getting a javelin chucked at you. Great. Fifteen to hit. We'll miss. So the javelin flies through the air through the uh, a uh, a window uh, the window on the side uh, and now you kind of notice that uh, the other window the window up here uh, appears to be barricaded. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna need you guys to roll initiative again. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Oh my god, guys. Jesus. Yeah, welcome to this group. I'm rolling in roll 20. Yep. <laughs> well, Mike. Hey, all of our bad rolls. Yes. The Those bugbear ducked bad. back into cover as soon as he chucked the javelin, or ducked back behind the wall. Uh, it's your go. What are you going to do? Okay, how high is this fence? Not that uh, this happens. fence, honestly, not that high. Like a couple feet. Yeah, I just I I, I jump over the fence mm -hmm. and duck behind this tree. Okay. Yeah, you're and able to. I don't, I don't see him from here. Yeah, he's currently. You saw him duck back inside the building. So I will notch an arrow on my bow and ready to shoot. Anyone that I see that pops out from the building. Okay. Uh, it is now bugbear number two. That bugbear will run over to the window, and you get your ready to action shot out, out of him. With the kind of walls and the s slightly smaller window, uh, he has three quarters cover at the moment. Um, I don't think that matters for me. Oh yeah, you have sharpshooter. Then never mind. Um, so, do they look well armored? Uh, yeah, they appear to be wearing um, they appear to be wearing uh, kind of a this high. Actually, no, they they don't appear too well armored. They appear to be wearing this hide armor, but uh, they the one that uh, pops out is wearing a sh uh, has a shield on his side. Okay, so I will shoot him with my bow. All right, roll to hit. Um, one sec. I guess I just keep it the way it is. Uh, thirteen. 13 sadly doesn't hit. The arrow whizzes, uh, whizzes and bonks into the uh, uh, the bottom of the window. Uh, missing. Uh, seeing your shot, he's going to take his javelin and whoosh, chuck it over at you. Uh, at disadvantage. I do have cover. And you would, yeah, you have half cover. The trees aren't like thick, thick. Yeah. They aren't, they aren't too big, but you'll have half cover. 
So disadvantage. Uh, wow, nineteen to hit. It's well, seventeen, right? Well, no, he he has plus two armor class. It's not he gets a minus two to hit. It's plus two armor class. Still yeah. So you take five points of piercing damage as the javelin, and uh, you're able to duck out of the way. You that was a lot of exertion to get uh, get that guy down, or to avoid that fucking javelin. And then he will uh, duck back uh, behind cover. Eliza, Eliza, here you go. Will, uh, Eliza will. She can't see them, right? At the moment, no. They both appear to be behind uh, behind the walls and the door. She's gonna try to. Probably a dumb move on my part. To get where? To see if she can see them. Where oh, Where are you moving? Towards this window right in front of it. Um, that's 30 get, feet, I think. Is that yeah, right? that's that's your movement. Uh, it's, you can see like a barely outline of one. Or, well, did you... And she'll hold an action to cast a fireball as soon as she sees uh, one of them. Hmm. Okay. Right then. Uh, Snez, your turn. At this point, I'm conflicted. What? I'm conflicted. You're conflicted. What do you want to do? They... Two courses of action I could take. One is stupider than the other. Mm. All right, okay. I'm going to move here. Mm. I'm going to hold action to lightning lure. Anyone who gets in range. Ooh. All right. It is now the second bugbear's turn. And he will pop his head out. <laughs> Snes, uh, you do your action first, and then Eliza can do hers. So, Snes. Uh, roll lightning lure. Okay. So, strength save. Yeah. 14? Passes. So you reach out with the lure and try to grab him uh, with the like loop of lightning that uh, wraps around those who are affected by your spell. But uh, the uh, bugbear is able to kind of feel it go on into his arm and rip it out uh, from uh, that was wrapped around his arm. So sadly he saves. Now Eliza, you can do yours. But he currently has three quarters cover, so he gets plus five armor class. Well, zero will uh, zero. cast your firebolt. Yep. Yeah. Fifteen sadly misses. Uh, it uh, flies through the air and pierces, or not pierces, but explodes onto the side of the wall, and just bursts into flames. But uh, yeah. Um, that's oh, now it's actually the bugbear. He is going to chuck a javelin. At Snez for doing that terrible thing to him. <laughs> oh, ooh, net oh, one. Yeah. yeah, the javelin. <laughs> he kind of ooh, chucks it at you, but the javelin flies over your head and lands into the dirt uh, behind you, completely missing you. Yeah, I just do like a super gay squat. <laughs> I like. He just gave you a present. That's all. I like to think uh, with a nat one, he froze in and accidentally sticks in front of him, and then it kind of ricochets. And Wait, Bailey, did you roll initiative? Uh, I thought I did. Did you, you did, select your? But you didn't get in the list. You need a so when you roll initiative, you need to select your token to uh, yeah, so to add it to if initiative. You think on the map, then yeah. take initiative on your sheet. Yeah, I'll I'll edit it and I'll add it in. At eight, I yeah, he's at six. Oh, six. Right. So, 
he goes now. Bailey, it's your go. Where'd he go? I had to switch oh, parts yeah, of my he sheet. <laughs> moves back on over to here. What you doing, man? Uh, I'm trying to cast the spell, but what are you what are you casting? Oh, I was clicking the wrong part. Okay. Uh, who are you curing Dan's? Yeah. Okay. So reaching over the healing energy from the druidic magic uh, flows into you. Uh, roll the healing. So three hit points to you, Dan's. That's embarrassing. That's really embarrassing. The and yeah. All right, I'm just gonna take out one of my hand axes and move to right here, where I at least can't be seen by the enemy. Yeah. And I'll keep an eye on this area over here in case something comes around. Okay. Um. Now it is time for Dons. Your turn, Dons. Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Aaron? Sorry. I'm asking, is there a... Uh... I was muted. Is, yeah, is, that a, is that a door down here? or how Yeah, that, the building? down there, there's a door. Okay, and everything else, this is a window and... There's... There's a window over here, and then there's a boarded-up window over here. Okay. But it's all one story. Yeah, it appears to be a one-story building. All right. Uh, oh, the, air, the window on that side is boarded up? Yeah. This window, or this window though, Gosh. is not. But uh, Dan's, uh, as you try and open the door, uh, no, first, as you try and open the door, uh, it appears to be, uh, stop moving your character in. <laughs> Uh, it appears to be boarded up. Okay. So you're going to need to try and uh, break it. through. You can either do that through athletics check or something else. If you have another other idea. I forgot I need to enforce sure. if I can run a site. So does an 18 smash through? Oh, yeah, 100%. So you break through the door as you run up, and the door smashes wide open. And you see the two bugbears there, who uh, look completely shocked that the uh, the well-made barred door was just fall, uh, fell to the ground broken. And they look worried. <laughs> but uh, that was your action to get the door open. It was, so... Um... How, let's see, how far did I drive? That was 5, 10, was that 15 feet that I traveled? Uh, from where you were, yes. 15 feet. Alright. Um... Got more healing than a good berry would have gotten, though. <laughs> this is true. So I'll step over Yeah, that still sucks, oh. though. Okay. But good berry, he would have gotten 10 out of the good berry. Well, no, you have to, it takes an action to eat one. it's still an one. action for one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you still have got more healing out of the good berry eventually. <laughs> eventually. yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, is that all you're going to do, Duns? Uh, yeah. Mike. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to shoot at the one I see. All righty. Yeah, which one is that? He's wanna... the one through the door that just got busted open. Um, ah, right. Can I ping oh, this? Why. Why can I ping this? Um, yeah, you ignore cover, so it doesn't really matter. So roll to hit. Yeah, he doesn't have any cover. I can't ping it because I'm in the wrong mode. Yep. Yeah, I go, go cover anyway. Yeah. Yep. Go um, ahead and shoot. Uh, twenty-one hit. Oh, that that one hundred percent hits. Um, for five piercing damage. The arrow flies through there, and he barely manages to dodge it, but he looks oof, that like that was a very close shot. But he's able and to kind of he's kind of heaving after that. 
and then I move down towards these trees to get some better cover and maybe get a different angle on. Okay. Um, after that, it is bugbear number one, the one who just got shot. He does not like that. He does not like the fact that that door is now open. So he is going to throw a javelin at, since he can only see Sniss, <laughs> going to chuck yes. a javelin at Sniss. The javelin. 19 to hit? Does a 19 hit? We're level <laughs> one. I, I like ask. Actually, no, Don says 20 armor class now. Doesn't 21, he? actually, because I have the yeah. defense. So, you know what? I can ask it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, no, it hits. I'm, yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm laughing because I've realized that I'm the party tank and I just got the fuck out of the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks so, for that. Yeah, the, good job, the javelin <laughs> flies through the air and pierces into your side as you fall <laughs> to the ground, unconscious, currently bleeding. Did anyone think of asking for healing potions? Nope. <laughs> Crits, hey, man. I, 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 Honestly, I, I got figured plate. that was too expensive. I got <laughs> plate. I figured I shouldn't press you my luck. $1,500 plate mail. Exactly. That. I figured I shouldn't press my luck. <laughs> Uh, Eliza, your go. Zarius can come over here and hide behind your bushes. No, not hide. Uh, try take to cover. Get, yeah, take cover and uh, leash uh, fireballs onto the bugbear. All right, roll to hit. At the moment, he has no cover because the door is smashed open. Uh, sadly, a 13 misses. Oh. Yeah, the firebolt whoosh, zooms through there and pierces into the other side. However, you do start noticing that the uh, fire... There's a lot. Of, there's starting to be some fire uh, coming up from over here and uh, and over here, just a little bit at the moment. Uh, Snez, make a dot saving throw. Oh jeez. Yeah. One success. The other bugbear is going to move on over to here, and is going to take a swipe at you, Don's. With his morning star. Jesus. <laughs> the bugbear attempts to whack you, but uh you easily dodge out of the way of it. Uh and bonks. That's the he... same bugbear that threw the javelin earlier. Yeah. He is not having luck today. Uh the bugbear just psh, bashes into the side of the wall and there's like a bit of a splintering of it and shoots out at you. Um Bailey, your turn, buddy. Uh, I brush a splinter out of my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do? Other care wounds? Let's hope this goes better. All right, roll. Yeah, it's way so to go. Much better. Max. Mm -hmm. The 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 magical druidic energy flows through him and kind of like pops the spear out of his stomach and it kind of like rolls off it and lands onto the side and you are no longer bleeding you are prone but you're no longer bleeding. Works. Yeah, yeah I just I'm now currently laughing. His his, I just his magic um, mashed up leaves into the wound to stop it. Yep. So the mashed up leaf goes in there and they glow with this bright kind of vibrant green and purple light and heal your wound. Dons, it's your turn, my friend. There's a bugbear in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> it's time for... Uh... Smacking? It's time for smacking. And yeah, was... that eight definitely made up for earlier. I will smack him with my long sword. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, the long sword just We're both we're both smashing the same uh piece yeah. of piece of wall. Yeah, so he's like, Oh no and ducks out of the way and uh your sword pierces into the uh side of the wall as well. I'm just picturing <laughs> both of them with their weapons partially stuck in the wall. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. race to see who can dislodge it first. Yeah, this point is a fight of who can get to their weapon quickest? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, here you go. I shoot an arrow at the bugbear. I'm assuming it's 12 misses. Uh, 
12? No, that misses. Yeah. Uh, the arrow flies and pierces into the uh, into the wall. Uh, this bugbear again. He is going to he's going to chuck a javelin at Bailey because you just healed someone. He's like, no, but I'm out of I don't think he cares. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the javelin flies over both Bailey and Sniz's head, and the bugbear's head, and lands into the ground. Man. Eliza, you go. Well, Zira is going to cast another firebolt right at the uh, bugbear over here. All right. Roll to hit. Hits this time, but roll twenty hasn't been that forgiving. Jesus Christ! Nope, it hasn't. Had. The firebolt once again flies through the air and peer and shoots into the side. The fire grows a bit. On the plus side, roll twenty is not being very good to the bugbears either. That's so. true. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to do anything else, Eliza? I don't think there's anything she is willing to do at this moment. Okay. Snez, you're alive. You're not dead. I'm going to slowly pick myself up, pat Bailey on the back, and is it my movement to move him? Uh, I'm not sure mm. on how the wording is for moving a friendly you melee range. Absolutely. You technically can't, but if Bailey allows it, sure. But then that, that would count as willing movement from Bailey. What are you trying to oh. do? No, I was going to drag you out of the way. Oh, yeah. And hopefully not get an AO. But if you're going to take an AO, then Snez is going to do what Snez would do. Mm -hmm. He's just going to scream, and his purple eye is going to flit as he casts an Eldritch Blast at this one. Okay. Roll to hit. That Ooh. that hits. That hits. Oh. Ooh. The force bolt shoots through the air. He sees it coming and barely dies out of the way. It burns off some of his hair, but oh, he kind of like, <sighs> and he's kind of panting heavily, just like looking at the at uh, at all of you. Uh, the bugbear. Oh, wait, before mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. I still have a bonus action. Oh, what would you like to do for your bonus action? Oh, wait. I don't think I've got the ability copy down there. If you tell me it, yeah. Ram? I'm not sure if that should be an action or a bonus action. That's, that's an action. It's a, it is another strike. It is a considered a, a melee weapon attack. That's oh, I think I it is a bonus action, but he has to get a running start. No, no, no. It's just it would be... Uh, I think it works like the Minotaurs, doesn't it? No, it's... No. Let me double check. All it is is he has Good basically idea. an unarmed strike. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think it's a... I don't think it can be a bonus yeah. action. Oh, I'm, yeah. It, it's just you can make an unarmed strike if you're in melee. Yeah. He has melee. Oh, so, like the Minotaurs... You could do it as a bonus action. Yeah, the whole know. ramming thing. Yeah. But um, I will move up here. All right. Uh, that bugbear's turn. <laughs> okay. Um, he's going to. He's going to. Um. Hmm. What's he gonna attack? You know, he's gonna try and go for Dan's again. That Bring it. That, that guy. That guy's really annoying. Actually, no. He's gonna try and go for Snes. Because no. Mm. Yeah, I no, just he's gonna... messed him up. You did. Just but... roll. Just roll a d6. No, I think I'm... <laughs> he's gonna go for Dens. He's right. the heavy hitter. If he can take him down, then he could easily take down the rest of you. So he's gonna try and whack. Twenty-one. Twenty-one will hit. So you take. Oh my God. I'm down. Uh, that just happens. Ouch. Yeah, fuck. The bugbear just 
boosh, booms you in the side, and you feel it kind of like crack, and yeah, you... He sl- yeah, he slams me into the side of the wall. Yeah, yeah. Are you not using a shield? Oh, yeah. That's with a shield. It was with a shield. 21's oh, gonna yeah. hit me with a shield. Damn. All right. Uh, after that, Bailey. Wait. Oh, okay. I thought it was my death save. But no. After oh, right. That. No. Make it. Yeah. No. It's Bailey, and then your death save. But yeah, what would you like to do, Bailey? I would like to move and stand protectively over my ally. Okay. I'll I'll move him down to the back. And what you gonna do? Do you I have was any wanting to try and talk them to surrendering, but at this point no, I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe not, but I mean looking at the one in front of you, he's panting heavily. That that Eldritch Blast hurt him up. All right, I'll try it. And at the same time, I am taking out my second hand axe, so I'm officially dual wielding for next round. Um, You still have your action. Yeah, I'm... isn't it, it an action to try and persuade? If you want to, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So what, what do you say? Look, there's still more of us than there are of you two. You can surrender... And survive. And yeah, make a persuasion check. He's kind of like panting and looking over to uh, the and other bugbear. I don't know why advantage is on. It, it's just automatically on. Um, I hate that design. Well, there's a way to turn it off. Go to the cog top right yeah. sheet, and you can, can set to advantage toggle. We can figure that out later. But, um, yeah, the bugbear is kind of, like, looking at, his, at the other bugbear, and he's looking back. He's kind of, like, snorting. Uh, but he seems to kind of still be in it. He doesn't seem to stop. But, uh, yeah. Dons, here we go. Fail. Mike. Here you go. Um, I will shoot my longbow at him again. All right. Damn. This is uh, not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. The arrow flies through the air and once again pierces into the wall. Uh, as uh, oh, uh, the fires begin to grow a bit. They grow a bit larger. Uh, but yeah, the bugbear, this one is going to, feeling, hmm, feeling slightly confident now, he is going to step out and move past and chuck a javelin at the archer. Attack of uh, opportunity. Attack. Okay, go for it. Uh, 15 misses, sadly. Ah. Oh. Yeah, just oh, barely. Wait. I set up the horns. It's you can just roll a d20, I... add your strength modifier what? plus your proficiency. That oh. hits, though. It's basically the same. Right, the, as you, as he runs past you, the bugbear goes down. As you ram him in your head, in the, uh, on the side with his horn, uh, with your horns, and he kind of rolls onto the road. Kiss. I break his nose. Yeah. In like twenty places. Yeah, you kind of then you ram in the head and you hear the snapping of the nose and it it's like oh it looks terrible. It's like being pushed. It's like a giant pressure pusher, like a pressure like something that you know things that like slam down on like uh, uh nameplates or and such just like bonk, do that. It kinda of, it was kinda of like something like that just smacked into his nose. I imagine it looked like when someone gets clotheslined in wrestling and they just backflip. Yeah, basically. And he falls to the ground, dead. Uh, but that's all he can do. 
Uh, Azira. Yeah, you got it right. Uh, Azira is going <laughs> to do another firebolt. Oh, come on. Wait. Yeah, 13 misses. The firebolt uh, slams again. The fire is going bigger now. <laughs> it's starting to kind of uh, consume the wall. <laughs> and starting to grow just big. Sness. Bailey is down right. Bailey is currently, or no, not Bailey. Uh, Dan's. Dan. Dan's is currently down. And Bailey is standing up. Yes, Bailey is standing up. Okay. Then I'm going to grab the uh, Hobgoblin? No. Sorry. Bugbear. 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 I'm sure they're all stanky. Uh, 14. Sadly misses. He's not wearing our, uh, metal armor, right? Yeah, no. He he is... Um, he's wearing high armor at the moment. He does have a shield as well. But sadly, he's able to duck out of the way of the attack, and the lightning just... Tsh, 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 glows. Uh, the bugbear, seeing his unconscious brother at the hands of you, will attempt to whack you in the side with a uh, javelin. With a melee attack. So. Oh, 23. Oh, that's good. 11 damage. I'm down again. Oh. The javelin pierces into your side. And you kind of cough up a bit of blood. And fall to the ground. Unconscious. Tilly. As he pops out. He's just going to shout. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. Uh, with Between me down and SNES down. The bugbear has everything he needs for a barbecue now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, Bailey, your go. Okay. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to. That hits, though. The 18 hits. All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll the second one. Nope. Second one misses, though. But 18 hits still. Roll damage. That's actually enough. The hand axe pierces into the side of the hobgoblin, or bugbear, I mean. Fucking honestly, get this confused. Uh, the bugbear, and, like, guts him. The A uh, bunch of guts just fall out as the hand axe carves into him. And the bugbear slumps to the ground. Um, we're gonna keep initiative track up to track death saves. Dons! Death save! Alright, this is it. And if I roll I'm gonna go one, I'm dead. Move my icon. Yeah, yeah that's good. Fail. Two, two failures on me. All right, Mike, here go. Um, does Mike have good berry? No, just, like, just a I medicine guess, check know. is all you need, man. Just all you need is a medicine check. Uh, I should have kept good berry and stuff. <laughs> good ones. And the healers have a healing spell. Yes. Nice. Level one, you only get two slots. Too true. Which yes. is only slightly better than a D and D with one slot. Yeah. Yes. So this is why Goodberry is better because you'd have twenty healings versus two. What 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 are you doing? Um, moving. Uh, just uh, I'm thinking where I want to move. Uh, well, you already moved thirty five feet. He's to Baxi. Yeah. Oh, feline agility. Thirty five is nothing. To me, yeah. are, are you activating right. feline agility though? I need to know, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, he's got like mild movement, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, do I want to continue going that way, or do I want to do a medicine check? Not that it's great, fine. Here. I'll be fine. Who's after me? Ezra, Snez. Snez, you haven't made any de any death saves. He yet, hasn't made any death no. saves yet. Yeah, I've already failed two death saves. Go for dance. What happens if I fail my my? Nothing negative happens. It just means it you don't stabilize him. Yeah, you are the stabilizer. Order. You can still stable, like, nothing negative happens. Even if it's a natural one, which doesn't matter. 
So what are you doing? There, Although he does have two failed saves at this point. <laughs> yep. Pick up that. Okay. Ten, ten <laughs> succeeds. It's a DC ten. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I stick my finger in the hole. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you use a couple of your hands to cover it and uh, get some other oh, shit to actually cover eight. the wounds. And he rolled an oh. eight. <laughs> no. I'm a cat. I start licking his wounds. Nice. <laughs> oh, that that's just, you know, that's a bit weird, that's but, you know. I was just going to say uh, he didn't touch the side, so the buzzer didn't go off. Okay, no one got that reference. I'll just tell him. I got it. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Don's... Eliza. Eliza, it's your go. That was zero. Okay. Oh, Zero. Yeah, I'm going to get that name mixed up for a while, alright? Alright, uh, Zero's going to move up here and try to do a message check on Sniff. Alright, go for it. With the I message hope check. she does a better message check than she does a Firebolt. Yes, she does. Yes, yes surprisingly. <laughs> you quickly, taking some uh, leathers and such, tie up the wounds and keep them alive. <laughs> They are they are stable now and are dying, <laughs> and they. House is burned down. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the house is burning down. Yeah, the, uh, the you notice that the house is starting to burn. Uh, that may also mean the yeah. supplies burn. Uh, that's it's all right. She has control flames. She can go in and just okay snuff, out snuff it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll take care of it in a minute or two. Yeah. It's easy enough to uh, get it uh, cleaned up, but um, yeah, uh, in the in the house itself, uh, or in the farmhouse itself, uh, you see you see a you see the crate of what appears to be a bunch of weapons and supplies, uh, but on the ground near the two co- or not the two costs, the two bed rolls, uh, appears to be a small pouch, and uh, a strange uh, strange morning star. Uh, appears to just be kind of uh, resting next to it. Anybody a cleric? I guess not. <laughs> Get a cleric. I mean... I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's going to help, uh, after snuffing out the fire, help take out the supplies. And we should have asked for a cart. <laughs> should have asked for a lot of things. <laughs> He did, hey man, say, he, did, he did say he would send people over here to gather up the supplies. Right. After you guys brought back the bodies. Or after you confirmed Word. that they were dead. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, you guys are now... <laughs> you know, I think this is a good place to end the session. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys there in the sunning, uh, the beautiful burning light of the uh, morning, or the midday sun shining down you find yourselves at the dilapidated farmhouse of the two bugbears that fucked you up and i think that's where we're gonna end the session today um that was an interesting first session to say the least to say the very very least how did i end up talking in the sorcerer that happens a lot (laughs) i know how you feel I know 100% how you feel. It happens. Sorcerers are weird, weird, weird builds because they're kind of mages and tanks and together, right? Nah, nah. The, the true tanks are wizards. All right. Wizards are the tanks. Since, every, since all everyone targets them, they're tanks. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us this week. Um, is there anything we want to say at the end? Uh, I forgot. Are we doing. Are we on for next week, or what are we doing for next week? Yeah, are we doing. I thought we were doing a one week uh, Game of Thrones. One week. Uh... Yeah, it was one week Game of Thrones. One to try to get ready within the week. If uh, I don't get it ready in time, uh, we okay. can continue the uh, one shot. Well, n- oh, the one shot. No, we yeah, don't need to. We can continue Wrath of Dragons if we. No, it's. No, no, it's not. Really I, I I would like two weeks to prep. Okay. <laughs> 
so then yeah uh, we can do the one shot if uh ra- if game of thrones isn't ready right uh mm-hmm. so until next time we'll see you then later yep have a good night you guys all right good night thanks, thanks.